So back to the ice mold now with the cooking process. So we are going to cook the ice mold and also color and discuss about how we should do it, what kind of temperatures to look for and other details. So I've got my scale and my stainless steel pot. I'm going to pour about 50 milliliters of water. But I've mentioned previously that the amount of water is not super relevant. So I will put the 50 milliliters of water and as advised previously, um, I said I usually use 50 milliliters of water with 500 grams of isomol, but on this particular bag I've got about 650 grams, so a bit more than I usually use, but that's not going to make any difference, okay? So I'm just going to pour this isomol. And as I'm going to do a wet kind of cooking, I'm going to place the whole amount of isomol in the pot. Now, whenever you decide to cook um, the isomod dry, I will suggest you to put a little bit at a time. So start with a small amount, maybe like 100 grams of isomod, start melting to get to a kind of a liquid consistency before adding some more. Okay, so in total, I've got 765 bag, uh, grams uh, minus the 50 grams of the water. So I've got about 700 grams of sugar with 50 milliliters of water, but that's going to be fine. So I'm still going to get the wet sand consistency and I will show you how in a sec. Good, so if I steer, you will actually notice that the isomol turns up into a wet sand consistency sugar. Okay, that's all I need. So literally a bit of moisture to help my isomol to cook a bit quicker. Okay, so um, I'm going to put my stove on, my stove, my induction plate, setting the temperature to about 140 degrees. I don't want a very high temperature. My plate does develop a temperature to about 200 degrees Celsius, but I will start with about 140 just to give the isomol the chance to start melting. And I will just stir from time to time. But comparing with the sugar, this is not going to burn um, before it practically cooks completely. And that happens at about 180 degrees Celsius. So that gives me a bit more time to to prepare everything. I've got the thermometers on the side and I'm going to pop, pop my gloves to make sure I stay safe. And once my eyes are more will start melting, I will increase the temperature to the maximum on, on my heating plate, which as I said, is 200, uh, 200 degrees Celsius. I also have got the pot with water on the side. I've mentioned about having some cold water um, because that's necessary to stop the process of cooking. You might think, but yeah, wait a minute. You don't want to go over 200 degrees with the, um, the temperature of the sugar, but the heating plate doesn't develop a temperature higher than 200 degrees. So what's the point? The point is with the sugar, even if you stop the, um, the heating plate so you don't have any heat going around if you don't stop the process of cooking by cooling down the bottom of the pan the sugar will carry on cooking on its own and you will reach temperatures for even 250 degrees in just like half a minute maybe even less than half a minute so it's ideally it would be to have some cold water just to drop down the temperature below 180 and to just um, you know, just give the, the eyes and more the chance to just stay clear, not to get caramelized. You now, sometimes people do say, yeah, isomol cannot be caramelized. It actually can. You can burn it, um, but that happens usually over 220 degrees Celsius. Now, what I'm going to show you here is the, um, the way how I usually cook the isomol because I think it's just uh, more convenient than to do it in, in different batches. You can definitely just do one batch clear, one colored in a particular color, whatever. But what I'm going to do, I will just cook the whole amount I've got here up to um, 180 degrees. At 180 degrees, I will stop the uh, cooking process 
then I will pour some of this clear isomold on on a jug whatever I will have left it will be colored and to color I'm actually going to use um, not sure if you've heard about fractal colors I think they are produced in Hungary they are quite trendy now so I'm going to use turquoise this is actually a color, liquid color for airbrushing but that's absolutely fine I'm going to use some to color part of the, the isomode it will turn up kind of a greenish like turquoise but it will be translucent but then I will reserve some as translucent and then I will add some more some white uh, and I will turn up that into an opaque color okay now in regards with the white I've got two different types of dust but to be honest they are identical but just one is a larger size pot because I use white for cake decorating and also for chocolate work so this is the PME white dust and this is the, the Deco Relief which is a French company um, and they produce this in larger pots because chocolatiers normally intend to use quite a lot of white so it really doesn't matter which brand you go for as white is white is all titanium dioxide so um, it really doesn't matter if it's um, um, if it's written on the pot that is for chocolate work or sugar work it will behave the same it's literally universal so the food white is uh, based on titanium dioxide so. Okay. so I will increase the temperature at this point to 200 degrees as you can see um, the sugar got quite liquid but still got lots of granular so if I've got I can still see the granulas definitely the temperature is below 160 degrees when it turns over 165 or 170 the whole mixture is quite liquid and translucent at 180 degrees uh, we don't have any granulas unmelted so it's pointless to take the temperature before everything turns up like a clear liquid when everything looks clear then i can use my infrared thermometer check the temperature see how it looks like and then use the inserted thermometer to make sure that i go to the required temperature which is 180. now if i will end up going slightly over 180 will not be the end of the world but i would definitely definitely don't want to go over 200 degrees um, as i did mention uh, sugar will start cooking on its own very quickly and it's very easy to reach 220 degrees and turn up the clear isomalt into an amber color by caramelizing the sugar okay. in regards with the coloring if you prefer to just prepare a batch of isomalt and color the whole amount then at about 155 degrees you can add the color and then you can carry on cooking up to 180 degrees as i'm going to do it slightly different storing some of the isomalt as being clear and then color some as translucent and color the rest as matte color then i will do it kind of differently going up to 180 and then adding the color and then raising the temperature back to 180. But if you want to color everything in one go then i say you can definitely just pour the color in the pot be careful if you use liquid color at 155 degrees obviously the sugar is super super hot you add your liquid color which is cold you might actually get some um, drops of hot sugar splashing everywhere so just be careful It does, look, it, it does look quite liquid. I've got a lot of foam going around here, but it's liquid. The temperature of my um, on my infrared thermometer is about 180, uh, 158 degrees. Sorry. So it does work actually setting the um, inserted thermometer and keep on eye as I'm very close to the right temperature. But you see that's kind of liquid. All uh, this white aspect is given by the air bubbles now i've been asked for quite a few times how can you get rid of the air bubbles 
uh, the way how you do it is literally by just maintaining the pot or whatever you use to to, to store the hot ice mold if it's a pyrex jug or um, a silicon tray or whatever just maintain that to around 80 90 degrees maybe inside of a normal oven because that will just um, help the air bubbles to escape keeping the consistency of the isomold runny it will allow the air bubbles to escape but if you cool down the isomold quick by just leaving the isomold on the side at the room temperature the, the air bubbles will actually be trapped inside of the isomold if that makes sense but just keeping that temperature quite high even if it's below 100 degrees it will allow the uh, the air bubbles to kind of move and escape so I've got 165 66 that the temperature goes up very quick at this point I don't have too much moisture coming through because practically the water got evaporated um, at about 125 degrees now near to 180 degrees is 178 very close to the temperature the ideal temperature of cooking so for 180 degrees now, I will stop the plate and then just pop the water, uh, pop the, um, the cooking pot into the water just for just a little bit to stop the, the cooking process. Okay. Now I'm going to use some kitchen paper just to wipe the base of the pot to make sure. Sorry, I forgot to get some before starting the cooking process. To make sure that there is no water drips getting into my hot sugar and as you can see the sugar that the isomalt is quite liquid okay so what i'm going to do i will actually grab my small silicon mold i've poured some isomalt just before i started the cooking process and um it just got firm so it usually takes about an hour or so but it took less because i only had one cavity filled with um, sugar so um i'm going to start pouring i'm only going to pour in a few cavities just about I don't know three four about eight in total I would say now those silicon molds are actually from a supermarket they are suitable for making ice cubes that means that the silicon is resistant to very low temperatures and normally the ones which are resistant to very low temperatures are also resistant to very high temperatures. Now this will go back onto the stove and I'm going to add the color. I will put on the plate, dropping the temperature a little and I will check to see roughly how um, temperature wise you see I'm 176 7 or 100 yeah 170 even if the pot was um, on the side and I'm just going to squeeze a few drops of color I forgot to actually remove the seal it is a bit broken so okay I just need to pay attention and obviously the sugar is super super hot i'm only going to add like a few drops and i will just do a quick stir see if i need to put more now about 100 i've got up almost 200 degrees so i'll just throw this in the water because again i'm slightly over the temperature needed always make sure that you don't have drips of water and I will add some more of this liquid as the color looks a bit too pale for me okay. you can see so it's seizing so it's definitely something to keep on eye to make sure you don't burn yourself when you do it 
I'm not looking for an even color throughout so even if it doesn't um, get mixed properly I will still be happy with what I've got here you see it's still translucent so I'm going to pour some of this color into my pirate's jug bit of the color left in the pot just to show you the difference if you add the white and i will pick a small wooden stick having the gloves on doesn't really help okay so i'm just going to pick the, use the, the the white pme dust because that's the most popular one i mean a most popular one in the cake decorating world um the other one being such a large quantity is um, yeah, it's a bit more expensive. So I'm just going to a, a touch of white. I only need um, a little bit of white because I've got a small amount of sugar. And I will start mixing. I will put the heat on but very low setting because I still got a lot of heat in uh, inside of my pot. Ideally, this dust color should be diluted with a drop of water. Uh, it does work if it's just just like dry dust, but you need to just have a bit of patience to wait till the dust gets dissolved. Okay. Just checking the temperature to see what sort of temperatures. I've got 134 now. I will just increase the temperature on the plate and that will just help the sugar to get cooked also the dust to get dissolved but I will keep an eye on the temperature because I really don't want to burn the size of what You can see already, even if you still can notice the specks of the, the white dust, that it's not so uh, translucent as it was before. Yeah. It turns up in more like a opaque eyes or not. But we will see the difference in a sec. Okay, still got some white, which is not perfectly dissolved. But you see the difference yeah, between the isomalt which we had colored just with the green uh, with the turquoise and the one which we had done with some white dust. So that gives us a clear, uh, a clear um, viewing about how we can cook and color the isomalt. Okay, what I'm going to do, I will just pour some of this um matte isomod in one cavity just one okay you will understand just a bit later what i've done it um i will also pour another cavity out of my clear try and clear translucent turquoise Now in the pot, where I still got some of that opaque isomod, I will add a bit of shimmer dust. That will give you an idea about how the isomod will look like if it's shimmered. So that practically covers pretty much all you can do color-wise with your isomod. I mean, obviously you can mix colors, you can create a a variety of colors by mixing the pre-existing colors you might have in your uh, cake decorating kit but i'm talking about cooking translucent clear isomalt 
translucent colored iso mode matte iso mode and shimmered iso mode so again i'll just give a quick mix to this have the heating on as the temperature dropped again it's quite funny that when the the isomore starts cooling down actually your tools get super super sticky it's very difficult to maneuver okay while it gets hot everything melts and it's more maneuverable okay so i'm just fine now with my shimmered eyes mold i'm just wondering if you can see that beautiful shimmer given by the gold and with this i'm going to fill the the last cavity to make sure that I will have some reference when it all when it's all going to be cold and ready to use good job done now with this pot i will just fill the pot with warm water and leave it for about half an hour all the sugar will dissolve and it will be very easy to clean and um, with the cooked iso mold i will stay on the side for maybe like an hour or so the one on the silicon mold it will take a little time to cool down because there are so many cavities filled with with this hot iso mold so um we will practically wait till it cools down and then we will restart um in a sec by just melting and trying to create some beautiful decorations so see you soon <laughs> 